Many teams in IndyCar history have been nothing but terrible in their time in the series. Some were run by very untrustworthy people, but most of the teams just never had good results. The topic of this video is one of the longer terrible team stories, and was owned by a driver we've talked about before. If you want to know the story about Marty Roth, check the video in the top right corner, but right now, we're talking about Roth Racing. Welcome back to All IndyCar, the motorsports history show looking at the most interesting stories in American open wheel racing. The years 2004 and a real estate magnate from Toronto is looking to start up a race team. This Toronto man was Marty Roth, who raced in Indy Lights back in the late 80s and early 90s, and then the Infinity Pro Series starting in 2002. Marty was unsuccessful in the 16 Indy Lights starts he made, getting a best finish of third at Vancouver in 1990. His 12 starts in the Infinity Pro Series were even worse, but with the money he had, that didn't stop Marty from pursuing a long career in motorsports. In early 2002, Marty Roth purchased Infinity Pro Series and IndyCar equipment from Panther Racing. This would give Marty the opportunity to race three times in the Infinity Pro Series and allow Marty to race in his first ever IndyCar race at the 88th running of the Indy 500. However, it wasn't all smooth sailing. Marty Roth, at the age of 44, would be the oldest driver to attempt to qualify for that year's Indy 500. Now, there are a lot of things that people can do well at the age of 44, but driving in the Indy 500 as a rookie is not one of them. Them. It also doesn't help that Marty wasn't too experienced in motorsports, period. In the Infinity Pro Series, his three starts weren't too bad, with Marty getting two top tens, but he did wreck in the first ever Frame 100, which wasn't a good sign for Indy. Speaking of Indy, the month was crap for him. He landed on the middle of the back row, being the slowest of all rookies. His race ended poorly too, as he hit the outside wall, something that had become a common occurrence for Marty. Also, a bit of a fun fact here, this car that Marty wrecked was the same one that Dan Weldon would use to win the Indy 500 in 2011. 2005 would be a mixed bag, with Marty having an okay full-time season in the Infinity Pro Series, a season where he got his first and only podium in the series, that being a second-place finish at Chicagoland. Marty's second Indy 500 would see him partner with PDM Racing, a team once called Poor Dumb Mechanics by a former owner. I feel like this goes without saying after that, but this month of May didn't go well for Marty as he retired from the race after only 47 laps. 2006 would be even worse than this as Marty pulled out of the Infinity Pro Series to focus on the IndyCar season. The Indy 500 was terrible, with Marty Roth crashing during pump day. It didn't even look like there was an issue with the car, it just seemed like he forgot to turn. With that crash, Marty was bumped from the field. He had returns to the series later that year, with these races being much better. At Michigan and Kentucky, Marty finished 18th. I mean, it still wasn't good as he was the last of the finishers in these two races. I should also note that his fastest lap in Michigan was about 185 miles an hour, an average speed that was nearly 8 miles an hour slower than the pole position for the Indy Lights race just two years prior. It goes without saying that 2006 was dreadful, and with how terrible the team was, expanding the team's little resources even thinner was probably the worst thing Roth Racing could do. Yeah, well, that's what Marty did, as in late 2007, he ran a second car for PJ Chesson. In Marty's four starts in 2007, he crashed in Indy again and retired from two other races. Chicago was a frankly dismal outing for Marty and PJ, qualifying 20th and 21st, only ahead of Milkaduno. For PJ, his final IndyCar start was marked with mechanical issues that left him 106 laps down. Marty, on the other hand, was 10 laps down with no mechanical issues on the day. This honestly hurts to record, but the worst is yet to come. Marty attempted a full-time season in 2008, and this is possible the worst season in the history of IndyCar racing. On top of another crash at Indy, he DNF'd another five times, failed to start four times, and even hit one of Thomas Schechter's crew members when it looked like Marty just fell asleep behind the wheel. This season, along with his entire driving career, was so awful that IndyCar refused to renew Marty's racing license for 2009. Roth Racing also had a second car which was driven by Jay Howard and John Andretti. This effort would get Roth Racing their best ever IndyCar finish that being 11th at Iowa. 2009 would ring as the final nail in the coffin for Roth Racing, but not after one last hurrah. On the entry list for the 2009 Indy 500, two Roth Racing entries appeared. With the numbers 25 and 52, no drivers were listed, but believed Jay Howard would have been one of these drivers, along with an unannounced female driver. However, the team never showed up and eventually sold all of its equipment to Alex Tagliani's Fast Racing, which has now evolved into Aero McLaren SP. The legacy of Marty Roth and Roth Racing
racing is one that no one wishes for. Marty Roth and his team are going to live in infamy as one of the worst drivers and teams in IndyCar history. I said this in my video about Marty himself, and I still think it stands true. I'm sure off track, Marty Roth is a great guy, but on track, he's only remembered as an IndyCar reject. 